Okay, we're now going to take a look at working with the constraint stack and some additional issues when you're working with the copy location, copy rotation, and copy scale constraint. So the first thing that I want you to do is click on this object and go ahead and zoom in. Do shift D to duplicate it and place this object over here. Do shift D to duplicate it and place it over here. Now go ahead and click on the center object and press the S key to scale it. This is so we can see what's going on when these objects overlap when we use copy location. Go ahead and zoom in a bit, do shift middle mouse button to pan over here. Now having this object selected, I want you to go to the constraints tab. Over here, just do copy location. Go ahead and click on this eyedropper tool and select this object. Because these objects are operating in world space, of course this object is going to go exactly where this object is. So when we press the G key on this target object, the owner object is going to follow it. Now I want you to go ahead and add another copy location on the owner object. Click on this eyedropper tool and select this object. Notice that as soon as we select it, this object is now copying the location values of this object. So when we press the G key, it's going to go wherever this object goes. But if we click on this object and press the G T, nothing's going to happen. The reasoning for this is because how the constraint stack works. So this location constraint is getting executed first, then this location constraint is getting executed next. So this location constraint is overruling this constraint. This is why this object no longer works when we move it, right? It's location values. Now, if we want to use the location values from both of these objects, we have to go to the last location constraint and move the influence. So here we can actually just click our mouse and type in 0.5 and enter. So this empty space over here is going to be filled in by the values from this constraint. So now when you click on this object, press the G key, you'll notice that the center object is now moving half the speed. If we click on this object and press the G key, it's going to move half the speed. This is pretty straightforward. Now when we have this object selected, press the G key attempt to move it. We of course cannot move it because both constraints are overruling our movement when we press the G key. Now over here, if we click on offset, you'll notice that the object is of course going to uh, move because it's going to add half its offset depending on where this was. So now when we press the G key attempt to move this object, it's still not going to let us move because this empty space over here is getting filled in by this copy constraint. So it's overruling that offset. We would have to click on offset over here. Now when we press the G key, you can see that we can still move the object. Now go ahead and uh, turn this off. Now you'll notice that when we press the G key, we can actually move this because uh, here, whatever it's getting overruled over here, right, this still has the offset. Anyways, here you're not going to be using offset like this when you're working with uh, constraints in a stack. Now, notice that when we click over here and put this down, this empty space over here is not getting filled in by another copy location above it. So this means that when we press the G key, it will actually let us move it. Okay. Now go ahead and put this to one. So you can see how the constraint stack is working. Go ahead and collapse both of these. Now what we're going to do is to take a look at the copy rotation. It's going to work the same way. So just add it and add it again. Go ahead and click on the eyedropper tool and click this one click on the eyedropper tool and click on this one. And of course, as you know, if you want to use both of these constraints, you have to click over here and type in 0.5 and enter. So now when we click on this object, press the R key to rotate, it will rotate. Click on this one, press the R key to rotate, it will rotate. So in the same way, if we press the R key, it's not gonna do anything. Now what I want you to notice that when we actually bring this down, it will allow us to rotate. So you can see that the copy rotation has nothing to do with the copy location. These are 
two separate concepts working in pairs because we're working with location values and rotation values. Okay, so they're not going to be related. So go ahead and put this back to one and collapse this. Now let's do this with scale. Do copy scale again and do copy scale again. Same thing, click on this, click on this guy, click on this one and click on this guy. Now here we have to click and do 0.5 again and press enter. Pretty straightforward. So now when we click on this, press the S key to scale, this object is going to scale between this value and this value. So if we press the S key to scale this up, right, it's just going to stay in the middle. So that's how this works. Okay, that's a very straightforward concept to understand as to how the constraint stack works. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and zoom out, click on this object, do shift D and place it over here, zoom in. Now scale it down and press the R key to rotate it. Okay, now click on this object. Over here, we're going to do copy transforms. Now the idea behind copy transforms is that from one object, it's going to give you the location, rotation, and scale values. So click it. Now over here, click on this eyedropper tool and select this object. You'll notice that that object is now going to go exactly where the, uh, that object is because copy transforms is the last one in the constraint stack. So this copy transforms, it's overruling all these values. This is because that's what copy transform does. It gives you the location, rotation, and scale values. So if we want to overrule some of these values, we need to make sure that the copy transforms is on top. Just go ahead and keep clicking it until it goes on top. And over here, we're just going to shut off everybody. Okay. Now over here, we can overrule the location values that it's got and getting from that target object by simply clicking on both of these. Okay. Now we can overrule the rotation values and overrule the scale. Now when we click on this copy transform and put this up and down, nothing is going to happen. Right? Because it's getting overruled by all of these. Now the thing to understand about this is that when we go to the topmost here, copy location, and uh, bring this uh, down before this area because there was no copy location above it we could press the g key and move this object but right now what's happening is that it's taking the copy location values from the copy transforms and filling them over here which is coming from this object that's what's going on over here see it's starting to move over there so that's the idea over here so we're going to be using this technique when we're building our rigging system. I just want you to understand when using the constraint stack, how you can overrule, overrule these concepts. Now, of course, if we turn this down and now turn uh, this down a bit, right? When you press the G key, you'll only see it move slightly, right? There's really no other constraint above it. Okay, there's nothing to fill. That's how this works. Okay. Now go ahead and actually just uh, reload this uh, file. So now you understand that concept. Now what I'm going to show you over here is what can you not do with constraints. Now this is going to be really important because this is something that you're going to encounter quite a bit. Now when you're dealing with parent-child relationships, you want to basically be careful as to how you use constraints. So meaning that if we click on this object, which is the parent of this object, when we press the R key to rotate, press the G key to move, the child will, of course, follow wherever the parent goes. But in this case, we can actually click on this child, go to the constraints tab and do copy location and say that we want to copy the location of the parent. And here we're going to basically evaluate both of them in local space. So you've seen this, we can click on the parent and press the G key. This is where we can control how the child is offset based on the parent's location. Okay, this is allowed. Now what you cannot do is you cannot tell the parent to copy the rotation values of the child. This is because when you rotate the parent, the child was going to rotate with it anyways. So this is where you can start to create cyclic relationship like this right or dependencies so if you click on this object the parent object do copy rotation 
and click on the uh, child. As soon as you click on the child and press the R key, you're going to get this really weird behavior. Because now this is just a cyclic relationship. So this is something you're not allowed to do with constraints. Now in the same way, if we click over here to copy uh, location, click on this tool and click on the child. When you move the parent, the child was going to move anyways. So when you click on the child and press the G key, you'll see that it's just going to fire off into infinity. Now we have to do control Z a few times to bring it back and just get rid of this. Okay, so this is something that you cannot do. Now in the same way, you can see that when we click on this object, which is the root object of all these objects, meaning that when we press the R key, everybody rotates, when we press the S key, scales, when we press the G key, we cannot tell this object to copy the location, rotation, or scale values onto this object because it's going to create uh, odd behavior. So if we do copy uh, rotation, click over here and copy the rotation of the child, this doesn't make any sense because if you rotate the child, the root is going to rotate, but when the root rotate, it was going to rotate the parent, which was in turn going to rotate the child. But when the child rotate, it wants to rotate this, meaning that it's going to get stuck in a loop. So now when you click on this object, press the R key, you'll see that you can rotate this, but if you attempt to rotate the parent, it's not going to make any sense, right? So it's going to get stuck like this. This is something that you cannot do, okay? Now, if you take a look at this object and this object, these two objects are just children of this object, so they're safe to use. So here we can click on this object or this object, doesn't matter which one you select. Here we can just do copy rotation in this example and click it, right? So now when we click on this object, press the R key, you'll see that it works just fine, right? And in the same way, we can remove this and we can say that, okay, from uh, when this object rotates, we want uh, this object to rotate. So here we can just do copy a rotation. This is also safe to do, right? So uh, when you click on this object, press the R key, it will rotate. You could have done vice versa. So you have to look at these relationships in detail when you're working with constraints. Right, so sometimes it, depending on how complicated your rig gets, it's going to get a little frustrating because when you're creating those relationships, you'll see that objects are misbehaving or they're shooting off into infinity. So when you see that happen, you know for a fact that you've created a cyclic relationship and then you have to simply just investigate and see what's going on, right? So in the same way over here, just to show you that let's say that over here, we're going to uh, take the rotation values of this object and apply them to over here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do, we're going to do copy rotation and click over here, right? So when we rotate this object, we're going to rotate this object, right? We're using constraints. Now what you cannot do, you cannot come to this root object and say that, okay, copy the rotation from this object. That's not going to make any sense, right? So if we do copy rotation, click over here and click it, right? So now when you rotate this object, again, you're stuck in some weird loop. That doesn't make any sense, right? So this is, again, creating these cyclic relationships. So that's what I want you to be aware of. You really have to think it through when you're working with the constraints. Okay, let's go ahead and now just reload the file. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.